something customers really need to take um, note of is that the C147 is going to be very hard to take off on a runway unless the runway is smooth as glass. If you're taking off a rough surface, the wheels are extremely tiny on the C147. Um, even if it's slightly rough, it's not really going to allow you to take it off. It's not going to gain enough momentum and power, and then you're just going to get frustrated. Um, so, in, like I said, unless you have smooth as glass runway, taking off the C-147 from the ground is not going to really be a good option. Hand launching the C-147 is usually the best bet. When you're trying to turn your C-147 on the ground, please note that when you apply full throttle, the steering left and right will be compromised and the plane will not turn as sharp. So if you want to turn sharp, throttle back and then do your turns. It's also interesting to note that if you throttle down to zero, the plane will still steer on the ground. Um, what will happen is the plane will move forward and steer very sharp. The concept of more steering with less throttle is going to apply to the aircraft in the air as well. A really big problem that we're having with our customers is that they're leaving the battery in the plane for an extended amount of time after they use it. So they're coming in from the field after using the plane and leaving it connected to the plane. Some people are doing it for a few hours, <clears throat> some people are doing this overnight. Regardless, the battery will be permanently damaged <clears throat> if this is done. When a light poly is deep discharged, it's basically useless. It can never be revived and it must be thrown out. This is not covered under warranty. The mistake that customers are often making is they're leaving their battery connected to the charger, like so, and they're leaving the charger unplugged overnight or for a couple days. Um, this actually will damage your battery because what happens is you'll slowly trickle discharge this light poly and like said in earlier videos when you discharge deep discharge a light poly battery and it goes to zero basically the battery is useless and you have to throw it out. We're getting a lot of phone calls where the customer is complaining that the plane is not responding to the radio and that's because they're reversing the binding sequence. They're turning the radio on first and then they're hooking up the battery which is wrong. What you want to do is you want to actually connect the battery to the plane and once the battery is connected to the plane you're going to go to your radio you're going to make sure your left stick which is throttle is all the way down and then you're going to power it on you're going to see a series of lights blinking and then you're going to actually hear a little bit of a glitch from your plane that means it's bound you'll test it by moving the elevator up and down okay and you'll actually test your throttle out as well Okay, and that means your plane is bound. Keep one thing in mind, a lot of customers are also doing this. You don't want to run a full battery pack with your throttle on the ground. What's going to happen is your engines are going to overheat and you can actually damage them. They have tiny, tiny brushes in these engines and the plane is not meant to be run wide open throttle while it's stationary on the ground. It needs to unload, number one, and it actually needs air going through the tunnels and cooling the motor off. So. Trying to cycle this battery by running the motors on the ground is a big mistake. Live poly batteries do not need to be cycled anyway, so it's not going to really benefit you and it's actually going to damage one of your motors. So one of the most important pro tips that we can offer you is by adjusting the control throw on the elevators um, on both sides by basically removing the push rod from the first hole, which is the outermost hole, and going to the innermost hole right under it. What's going to happen is that's going to give it about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half more up and down travel. The, res the response of the aircraft is going to be much quicker and more precise and overall you're going to get more control from your C-147. To do this you're going to have to remove the plastic cap that goes onto the metal push rod. Um, when you take it off it's actually a good idea that when you put it back on to put a very very small amount of Elmer's glue inside the hole. Don't put too much because you don't want to cause the, the uh, control surface to bind. Um, you're going to reapply it into the metal. I would let it dry for about four to five hours and then it'll cure. Do it for each side. In order to make hand launching your C-147 a lot easier, you're going to want to give your C-147 between one and three degrees of up elevator trim. It's very easy to do that. You're going to go to your radio and you're going to hit the down on the trim button about, I would say between eight and ten times until you see about a few degrees of up elevator trim and this is going to make the plane climb out uh, much easier. There's about three seconds of like panic usually when a customer hand launches a plane um, the plane will basically dive a little bit and they'll panic and they'll crash it. So to prevent that 
give a little bit of up trim. It's going to make the plane fly with a slight upward attitude and it's going to make hand launching it much, much easier. Flying the C-147 is a quite a challenge. And if you're a novice flyer, we'd like to give you some tips that are going to help you. Um, when the novice flyer first flies the plane, there is a lot of confusion. Well, it's really very easy. All you have to do is give, you want to hand launch the plane at full throttle and you want to climb to about two to 300 feet. Um, after you climb and get up to a nice altitude, you're going to actually throttle back to half throttle, which is going to make turning the plane much easier. Um, anytime you turn the plane left or right, um, just get, to give an example, if you go right on the stick, the plane's going to lose a little bit of altitude due to increased drag. So as you go right, you'll pull slightly back on the stick and you'll make a level turn. Same thing when you want to go left, slightly down, and that'll give you a level turn. Don't try to over, over control the plane by doing extreme maneuvers like all the way up or all the way down. Just gentle inputs, halfway across, halfway that way. Um, just keep in mind, the plane will turn better at half throttle. As a novice, you do not want to fly this plane at full throttle. The only time it's going to be at full throttle is on takeoff. In the next pro tip, we're going to show you how to add positive dihedral to your wingtips. Now on this side, we actually apply the positive dihedral and we're actually going to demonstrate on how to actually do it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your thumb and you're going to make small bends in the foam as you go towards the tip. Okay, now EPO foam has memory, so it's actually going to stay like that. And we have to tell you, this is actually one of the most important pro tips that we can give you. Even experienced flyers will benefit from this tip. Uh, I would not recommend flying the plane with the wingtips straight. So like I said, just to give you an overview, it's positive up dihedral by massaging a bend in both wingtips. Some people are also having trouble with the wingtips falling up. Uh, are falling off in the middle um, of flight and that's because they're not properly installing them onto the main wing. If you want to further enhance the um, the connection between these two pieces you could either put a I would put a clear piece of packing tape on each side of the wing uh, covering that spot so there's no chance that wing tip could actually come off. If you want to really take it a step further you could use Elmer's glue to make a permanent setting um, just keep in mind if you do that, it will make the wing totally permanent, so you'll have to replace the whole wing if it breaks. Um, and just make sure you keep that tip in mind.